Hi everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So as promised, I am going to be showing you how to make the display box for the mug, which I posted yesterday. So for anybody that's just new to the channel or just coming in now with this video, yesterday I showed you how to make the mug inside and today we're going to make the display box. I thought I'd do them in two separate videos because that way, you know, some people that just want to make the mug can go to that video and if you just want to make the box and put something else inside, then you've got that option. You just lift up the top here, it's a flip lid, and yesterday I didn't have anything inside here, and now I've just put this one, which says, have yourself a happy little Christmas. I'll show you the stamp set in a moment, and I've heat embossed that with a pink embossing powder. And then inside you've got some hot chocolates, a faux candy cane, because I will be getting a, uh, a real one, and I'm gonna put a different hot chocolates, I think, marshmallows, chocolates, sweets, all that kind of stuff, and uh, maybe a gift card in there as well. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so that's the stamp set I used. It's the woodware and it's the hand-drawn greetings and it's this lovely big one here. But you also get Happy Christmas and a Joyful New Year, which is a nice one, and then Merry Christmas to you. So yeah, great size, that one. Then I use that one there, which is the pink Paper Mania embossing powder for the inside piece. You can see it there again when it catches the light. It looks really nice. And you can colour it in as well if you want to. So I'll give the measurements to those pieces later on. I'm going to get straight into the scoring. Of okay, so for the lid, ignore the measurements that are there in front of you. You want this piece to be 8 and 5 eighths of an inch by 9 and 1 eighth of an inch. And you want to score at 1 inch and 2 inches on all four sides. Okay. the lid and that's going to be reinforced and then you'll want a piece that is seven by six and a half and again you want to score this time at one inch on all four sides all right again I've already done one I'm just going over them again so two pieces like that then for the decoration so this piece I think these are both the same actually yeah they are so you want two pieces I've got two different patterns this one's going to go on the lid so here and then this red one's going to go inside so these measure four and three quarters by four and a quarter okay so i've got two pieces and i think i've done the same size again yep four and three quarters by four and a quarter so actually three pieces of different pattern this one's going to go inside the lid and then your mats and your layers on top will depend on what stamp you're using so i won't give those measurements and We'll do these ones. So these are four pieces, and these are for your hinge, or you know, the side pieces. And these measure one inch by eight. And along the one inch side, you want to score at half an inch. And then fold and burnish. And then I've popped red tape. You don't have to use red tape, but a, a sticky tape, a strong double sided, will be better because you're sticking this to acetate. Okay, so I've done those. And then moving on to the acetate you will need, as always, all the measurements will be on my blog and all the products will be listed as well that I've used. So you want two pieces that are four and a half by eight, and then you want two pieces that are five by eight. Okay, so first of all, with these two pieces here, the base and the lid, you just want to fold and burnish all of your score lines. Then we do this one first. So. What you want to do is along the longer side, so the, the bottom, we're going to cut away the four squares completely because this is going to, in fact, we're going to chunk, cut a bit off. It could have actually been a bit smaller. I'm just thinking about it now. Um, anyway, so you just want to cut up past the first score line to the second and then remove all four of those squares. And then again... remove all four of those now you can keep that piece on so it's up to you actually I will leave it in because you can keep it there and fold it still just so it's a reinforced flap I actually cut this piece off so I just had that one piece which is what I was talking about you could end up having it um, obviously shorter but I'm just thinking I may well keep that and just have it reinforced because that might work quite well so I'm going to keep it as it is and rotate it so you, and you want to cut down the two score lines either end to the second score line okay so there's the first score line the second so that's the two and then I'm cutting past that first score line there I'm cutting to this score line so you've got them just attached by that piece there Again, go along to this side here and do exactly the same 
Okay. Then you want to remove the two outer ones completely. So, and then that one there. So you're just left with that tab. Again, on this side, just remove those two and then that one there. Then with those two, just take little wedges off like so. Okay, so I'll just lay that one down there just so you can see what we've got. Then get this one here. Again, along the seven inch side, cut down the two score lines at the front, just to the first one, and then just cut a wedge of these. And this is going to be our base. So it's exactly the same as this inner piece here. If you take those pieces away, it's the same. And then flip it right round to the opposite side and just do exactly the same again. And then what we'll do is we'll start with this one first. So leave that end where we've cut those two larger areas. And these two here, we're going to add some glue onto the tabs. So just a little bit of glue there. I'm going to do that one as well. Okay. And then you just want to fold it down and then bring this around to form a right angle. Okay, and then again with this one here, fold it down and then bring up your corners. And everything should line up. My score lines here meet up perfectly there because they're all going to be folded in in a minute. So just spend a moment just to make sure that that's all secure. Okay, and then just go around and pop glue on the inside of the outer rectangle. You're going to do it on all of them, but I'll just show you on this one close up and then fold it all in. And it's going to conceal those tabs that we just stuck down and reinforce the lid to make sure everything's nice and strong. If you go in and just really burnish it and you can spread out that glue. If I just bring it up there, you can see how neat that is. So you want to do the same on this one this one and even this one, just put glue on that piece there. Okay, so now you should have this reinforced flap and then your three reinforced sides, okay? Now, you might also want to stick this piece inside. You wanna make sure your flap's at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick mine inside. And then also on the lid, I'm going to stick that piece down there. Okay, so now I've got a nice strong flip lid for the top of the box. Then with this piece here, what I might do just while it's flat is I'm going to stick my other piece of pattern paper in the centre there. Okay, and then you're going to do the same. This time you've just got the one piece the, or the one um, side, you're not folding another piece underneath. So just bring the tab down and bring that round and just kind of pull it a little bit to make sure everything, it all lies, you know, nice and, um, you know, it joins up with both sides there. You don't want your box kind of rocking or anything. But all you would have on the other one now is you'd have another piece here that you would have folded in to make it reinforced. So that's that one. I'll go around to this one here and just do that on all of your four corners. Okay, so that's my base all done. So you, then I've just gone and stuck double-sided red tape on the short side of all of the acetate pieces. So there's my two that are four and a half width, and there's my two that are five inches width. So now with the base, doesn't matter which ones you start with, take the red tape off. Okay, and then I've covered, this is an inch deep, so I've covered about an inch in sticky tape, but you want to make sure that you get it completely flush with the bottom and it sits perfectly within this section. It's exactly the same width. This is five inches and this is five inches. So you do need to, it's quite important that you get them all lined up just like the other ones that I've done with this, um, you know, this same construction. Because if you don't get them all lined up with the bottom, then the, the, the height could be slightly out. You want it to be, you know, eight inches on all 
if you bring it up slightly on one and then down further on the other, your, your top's going to be all out of sync. So just make sure you focus on that. So I'm going to do that one and then flip and do the other five inch side. Okay, so that's the two there on each side. I know it's a bit hard to see, but hopefully you can get the idea. And now I'm going to do exactly the same on the shorter four and a half inch side. Okay, so now you will have something like this, okay? Then you want to bring in your hinges. Now you might find it easier to unstick and do one at a time because what you want to make sure you do, so I'll show you with this one, is take the backing off of one side and the fold of the hinge needs to line up with the, the side of the acetate here. So I'm going to start from... Trying to think which is the, I'm going to start from the bottom because that's you won't be able to, you need to make sure again that's all lined up at least you could cut the top if need be so the side where I've not stuck the tape on I can just sit and it will sit perfectly on the corner there and I can feel where the edge of the acetate is and then I can just bring that side around and start it off there okay so just start it off on the bottom because this bit is flapping down and then depending on which angle works best for you if you bring it down because you can see through the acetate I can just keep everything nice and straight and just bring up. You need to find an angle that's going to work best for you. I'm trying to film this so you can see it, but also make sure I get it straight. This works better for me. It's looking down this way. And you want to make sure the acetate sits within the fold of this hinge. Okay. But I think it will be easier to just unstick one piece at a time. And if it goes wrong, you can peel it off because, you know, you do need to really pull it, but it will kind of, you've got a little bit of repositioning with it. And then the next one should be a bit easier because all you really need to do is just keep that in line with the top of the other piece of acetate and just fold everything around. And there you get a nice corner. So once you get the hang of it, it's, it's very easy. And um, like I said, when I'm not filming, <laughs> it's much, much easier to line things up. So now I'm going to go with this one here. And I find it easier to do it this way. So I'm going to line up the bottom first, again just get it right on that corner, kind of tack that in place, like so. And then the rest of this, as long as you get it straight at the bottom, it should just all line up. And once you've done one, that was much, much easier because this is already kind of holding it in place. But you can see now how nice and straight that all is. So. Yeah, it will, it will get easier. <laughs> so again, I'm just keeping this bent inwards so it's not touching it yet, but bringing around that side so you get a nice corner. Still holding that away from it, turn it up this way. And again, just roll that down. And it does, it fits in really nicely. So again, I've got another nice corner there. So just repeat that now on this side. Okay, so now we've got this piece. What I would say at this point is check that the lid goes over the top, which it does. And if you're struggling with it, you can always, when we go to stick it in, you can stick the flap on the inside and then have the, the lid coming out over the top like that. Okay, and we can stick it down that way because you might find it gives you a little bit more um, space if you have gone in a little bit tight on these corners. Okay, then we want to decorate this piece here. So I'm going to bring in these sections. And what I've done with this one, there's one bit I didn't like, is I went a bit too, I think a bit too high with them. You can kind of just see it when you look inside. So I've gone a little bit shorter and I've got to remember which ones are which because I've just messed them all up. So I've already put tape on the back of them, but this is one inch here. So these are seven eighths of an inch by the whole width. So seven eighths of an inch, you want two. So two that are seven eighths of an inch by five and two that are seven eighths of an inch by four and a half. And you're going to stick them over the top there. And I think that goes really nice with the gingham and nice with the red that's inside there. So I'm going to stick all of those down. So 
Okay, so that's all the base. So now you can see it looks really good. Also, if you've got a pattern paper, make sure that it's you know the right way up on the inside. These have got polar bears on the inside. You can just see their little faces there. So that's all okay. And then what I should have also said, what I'll do is I'll just edit that into the video, but you will probably be best sticking this down before you start putting the hinges on. So get the acetate stuck down, but then you can go in. I mean, it is easy to still do. I'm gonna do it now, but some of you, you know, you might struggle popping it in that way. So I've just got some hot glue and I need to get a new glue stick. Okay, and you're gonna stick it in the middle. Now, if your handle touches the side there, can you see mine is a little bit, I don't know why, because maybe I've just stuck it out a bit too much, but what I'm gonna probably do is just fold in, I'm gonna fold in the sides there and just pop a little bit of glue in there. So you can just shorten it, just fold the sides down, or um, if you're watching this all first and then you're going to do it then just um, score it in a little bit further. Okay so I've just shortened my handle a bit there so now I'm just going to put some hot glue on the bottom there and then make sure that you're happy with the front. I want to have that one. No, I'm going to have it that way and then pop that in so it sits in the centre. Okay so you just see me there just put the hot glue on and you just want to move it around just make sure you're happy with the placement and that you can see it. My handle's shorter now, so it's not touching that acetate. It's a bit further at the back there, but actually it doesn't really, no, it doesn't matter. I quite like that because of the bow. Isn't it cute? And that's how it will look when obviously they've taken all the goodies out and they just have this nice little, yeah, nice little decorative piece. I really love it. Okay, so now we're just finishing off. So now the lid, so I've, while I've got my hot glue here, I'm just gonna pop a dollop of hot glue. Now this bow is using the smaller bow from, keep that held down there, from the Ultimate Gift Bow. So this is the one that I showed you how to make on its own and I used it on the top of the rocket boxes that I made, but I've used just the small one. So I've just cut that one, because you get three. You get this one, so one, two, and then you get this one here, three. So I've just cut two of those out and it makes a really cute little bow. But if you want to do the other one and um, on this one here, I will link up the tutorial to make that one. And then I've got these pieces. So these are uh, three quarters. I think I've done the measurements slightly different for these. Yeah, okay, so these are three quarters of an inch by four and three quarters. And you want two that are that length. And then you want two that are three quarters of an inch by four and a quarter and they're for the sides. Again, I've popped double-sided tape on the back of mine. So I'm gonna get them all stuck down. Okay, so now I'm really pleased the lid looks really sweet. So you pop it on over the top from the front and then go work your way back. But depending on how, you know, it's fitting, you might want to stick yours on the outside. Or if you're worried that it's going to be a bit too tight, you can stick it on the inside. So you may want to put, if you want to stick it on the inside, you want to put double-sided tape on here. So don't stick that pattern piece on and do it that way. I'm just checking mine now and I might if I want to stick mine on the inside or not because that fits nicely yeah I think I might stick mine on the inside so that's fine I'll show you then the sizes that we'll need to cut so I'm going to put some red tape on this piece here so I know I've just wasted that little bit but I've got another piece so I can just easily cut it Okay, so I'm going to pop the front on and the sides and then just before, just before you push it back inside, put the inside piece in there. Okay, so I've taken the backing off and then just push it like so. You do want it to be a snug fit because, you know, you want your lid to close like so. So if I just lift that up. So visually it looks exactly the same as this one. It's just that one stuck on the outside and then I use that decorative paper to cover up the sticky tape. So, yeah, stick that in there and then it closes perfectly. It's so cute. Love it. So now I need to make a piece of pattern paper to cover this piece. So I would say you want a piece that's one by five because you want it to cover all of that up. Yeah, that's one by five and it covers it perfectly and it just looks like the lid's all, you know, attached. So I'm just going to add some 
tape to the back of this one. There we go, so now the lid, stick that down, there you go, you can see the lid covers everything. Now I'm just going to die cut the Merry Christmas. I really love this little touch here, completely optional, you might want to do yours differently, but it's this one here, which is from um, Simply Creative, and it's these ones, I did share them in a what did I get, and I've got the happy birthday, thank you, and congratulations, and they're little tag dies, or borderline, sorry, and um, I just love the way they work. So I die cut it first in this plate and then you die cut it, the frame around it. You can't fit the frame over, you know, like your shadow ones. It's not one of those. It cuts very close to it. And you can see when I show you in a moment, but it's all attached to one thin strip along the bottom. It's just really nice. So I'm gonna go and cut two of those quickly. Okay, so that's how the die looks. It's really nice. I like how it has that very thin strip. So I've already stuck two together and then I've just got some glue on the back of my hand there. Again, I always say if you've got sensitive skin, then this isn't the best thing to do. Die cut it with some double sided tape or something might be easier, or just use your precision nibs. And then I'm just going to stick that, kind of line it up with the bottom of the pattern paper. I might put another one over the top that's a bit darker in colour, maybe more red. Just because, I don't know if that's a little bit, yeah, it's completely lost. <laughs> so I'm going to die cut. Um, probably this colour here and then I'll put that over the top. You'll see that in the photos in a minute or I might even do it before the video is done. Okay, so there you have it. Absolutely love it. I've gone for the red. I think it looks much better. You can actually see it now. Also, what I did notice is on this one here, you'll see that the hinges are on the outside. So I stuck the pattern paper down on the base before I stuck the hinges. But just to show you, you know, two different looks really, if you do it after, it doesn't really matter. They both look nice. It's not something, you know, I like both really. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the mug tutorial yesterday. That will be linked in this video also at the end and it'll be on my blog as well. So it's easy to find. And uh, yeah, please hit the like button, it's always appreciated, and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, so you get to see more fun tutorials. Thanks for watching, bye.